Hi, I'm Katie, a Hobbycraft artisan and artist. In this video, I'll demonstrate some acrylic painting techniques that are suitable for more intermediate painters. Let's get started. If you enjoy this video, subscribe to the Hobbycraft channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. Painting fur. Start with your base value, this will likely be the darkest value. Build up a base of strokes, painting in the direction the fur grows. Block this colour in, but still try to aim for swift, loose strokes. Using a lighter value, you can create this by adding a hint of white or a lighter tone to the original colour. Add some strokes on top while the paint is still wet, paying attention to areas where the light would fall. Once dry, go another shade down in colour and using a dry brush, stroke in the clumps of fur on top leaving some of the darker colour peeping through, again in the direction the fur is growing. Use the edge of the flat brush to create strokes. You can carry on layering in this way, going a shade lighter each time, until you are happy with the depth of the hair. Always leave some of the previous darker tones showing, paying attention to where the light would be hitting the fur. Save an almost pure white for the final details added with a fine brush. These final highlights will make the fur pop and appear much more 3D. Painting eyes. The eye of an animal can often be the focal point of the painting, so it's important to get it right and make it dramatic and realistic. Again, it's all about building it up in layers, starting with the darkest tones first. Using a photo reference will help greatly in accurately rendering the subject. Start with black, which is usually the colour of the outline and pupil. Be sure to incorporate some fur textures if applicable. Usually animals' eyes fade out from the fur around it, so it will usually not be a solid black line, but more feathered on the outer edge. Once the black is dry, you can start adding the colour of the eye. Start with a base colour that can be built up upon later. Build up a slightly darker tone around the outer edge of the eyeball, blending this with a soft brush. Go in with a lighter shade than the original eye colour and apply this radiating out from the pupil, again blending so it feathers out. Add 
up the fur colour around the eye. Once dry, you may need to reinstate the black outline a bit if this has been covered over in the last few steps. At this point, you can layer an even lighter shade of the eye colour on top of the eye in places to create more highlights within the eye colour. Add lighter tones of the fur using the fur technique. Continue to define the black outline where necessary and allow the fur texture to overlap the eye where it would naturally do so. Add some lighter tones of the black in areas where the light would fall. Build up the fur layers to the point that you are happy with, adding an almost white in small areas as a final highlight. Add white to the eyeball for the highlight, as well as in the black outline where the light would be hitting the subject. Finally, once dry you can add a glaze to the top of the eyeball where the eyelid would create a shadow. To create a glaze, use a watered down grey tone and overlay this once the painting is dry. Glazing Glazing involves watering down acrylic paint in order to create a translucent layer over the top of dried previous colour. You can do glazing in colours, which can add colour to a previous tone or monochrome painting, although this requires more skill. We will show you how to glaze using watered down grey acrylic to create shadows over your colour. Water down some grey acrylic and apply it over the dry painting in the areas where there would be shadow. Visit hobbycraft.co.uk to book a workshop, find your next craft project or learn a new skill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a thumbs up and we'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. See you again soon for more videos.